Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got an interesting revolver on the table. It's a Ruger Vaquero, chambered in 45 Long Colt, and this happens to be the Talo Edition. In the Talo Edition, this particular variant has the black laminate bird's head grip, and it comes in stainless and it has a shorter barrel than some of the other variants that are out there. It's also got kind of a unique hammer pattern, and you know it's, it's uh, highly polished stainless. There, this comes in a number of variations, and it comes in a number of different calibers, and there's also quite a bit of confusion around this particular type of gun. There was a Vaquero, which now you might hear called the old Vaquero, and then there was a new Vaquero, which they dropped the new and you have this. And one of the distinctions with that is the frame size. The older Vaquero was built on a larger frame. Uh, the cylinder itself was a little bit thicker. It was about 1.732 inches you know, around the, the uh, cross section, the diameter. And the new Vaquero, or this Vaquero, is 1675, 1.675. And it doesn't sound overly significant, but it does affect the ammunition. The older ones you could shoot hotter loads, and the newer ones you need to stick to the standard loads which isn't really a big problem with these because overall the big thing that these are being used for that's kind of created a resurgence in these is cowboy action. One thing like if you look at their site you'll see Vaquero but if you look at the gun you'll actually see new Vaquero right here. So there's a little bit of inconsistencies in the, the labeling. This says 45 cal which you might misconstrue as 45 ACP. This is available in a 45 ACP variant but this one is 45 long colt. And before I go a whole lot further, I will show you it's open, the loading gate's open. And if I get it in a position where I can rotate it, and all the cylinders are empty. So we have an unloaded gun. Uh, this is an empty box. I brought this out on the table to show you. This is really what the re brought the resurgence of this style of revolver. You might figure that, you know, flip out revolvers where you can just load the whole cylinder at once would have pretty much driven the loading gate style out of existence. And they might have if it wasn't for a resurgence of cowboy action. And cowboy action is, you know, it's a shooting competition sport, but it's also kind of a, uh, you get into the whole mood. You dress a certain way, and there's, there's quite a bit that goes to it. With cowboy action, in many of the competitions, you don't even shoot true live ammo. You shoot wax loads. So the, the ammo is a blank with a wax bullet. So that, you know, these aren't being designed to go gunfight a bear. The purpose of these, the big thing that they're used for, number one is show. I mean, they really are pretty. This is the kind of gun you'd put up on the mantle, but also for real use in you know, the cowboy action shooting. And in that case, it's style. And you know, the wax bullets, you're a little closer to the target. And speed, accuracy, and style come into play more so than you know, raw power. This is a spent 45 long colt. And I'm going to show you one of the limitations of this shorter barrel is the ejector rod. It's a little bit shorter. And also, I don't have any snap caps. So just to show you loading and unloading, you know, I've got this out there. Before we do that, though, let's talk about a few of the characteristics of it. I did mention it has a bird's head grip, and it's kind of rounded. So it's not a true gunslinger grip, which has kind of like the, the flare at the base. But it is contoured very nicely. It fits right into your hand and fits right into your palm. Now, when you try to grab it in a two-handed grip, you, it's kind of like a, you know, a gorilla grabbing it because you know, the, the grip just disappears in your hand. But it is quite comfortable. That straight front really gives you a good grab on your hands. It fits right into the palm swell very nicely. And we found it very easy to control despite being quite a small grip. And, of course, the bore axis on this is very high. But it didn't seem to flip excessively. And partially, these cowboy loads are not the most powerful loads out there. So they're, you know, these are actually live ammunition with a lead bullet. These are 250 grain, but they're not heavily loaded and they're built to be a little bit smoky, you know, again, going back to the show. So you got a little bit of smoke out of them. You know, you definitely send a bullet down range, but it's not like firing a 454 Kazool or something like that that's going to beat you up. And these grips are very comfortable, very easy to hold on to. The sights on it is just a gutter and a post. And typically these types of sights are difficult to work with. It was surprising how easy it was to see this sight and how easy it was to you know, shoot it well. And actually I said post, it's a blade. Technically that's a blade because it, you know, it's a little bit longer. But it was surprising how easy it was to shoot this and find your target and shoot it relatively well. 
whereas a lot of these gutter and post or gutter and blade type sites are, are very difficult to see and I think the gap being a little bit bigger allows you to see a little target on either side so you can actually kind of zone it in and that's good because these are the sites you got and that's the end of that the blade is welded in and the gutter is part of the frame so that's just the way it's going to be the hammer has kind of got a nice curvature to it and it's serrated it's real easy to get a hold of it it's loading gates open it's real easy to get a hold of it whether you're actually wanting to cock it or whether you're wanting to decock it it's, it's a real easy hammer and if you've got a shooting grip on it you can still catch it with your thumb or decock it fairly easily without even having to get two hands involved so shooting this at the range was a pleasure it was very easy to get it back into action we did find a few inconsistencies in the finish and there's probably still a few more I had to do a little bit of uh, time with this with some mother's uh, mag wheel polish and polish it up I don't know if this one suffered an indignity or two on the way to us or if the you know Ruger kind of skimped out on the final finishing process there were a few inconsistencies on the barrel and stuff like that but you know again a little bit of uh, mag wheel polish and a patch and some time spent polished it right up I would have preferred not to have had to do that I would have preferred to have it come right from the factory kind of perfection but that didn't take much effort and it really shined up nice you'll see it's got a nice luster a nice shine now this is deliberate this these machining marks are kind of the brush finish that that's on purpose that's the way it's supposed to be but other parts of it are tended to be you know highly polished stainless and there was a little bit of variation in the highly part of it the trigger on this is very very nice so if I have it in single action mode, which is the only mode available, uh, Ruger does state you can dry fire this. You've got a very short, crisp break. A little bit of take up, and there's the break. Comes in about three and a half pounds. Varies by uh, you know, a couple ounces either way. But again, that right there is the whole trigger pull. Longer than a few of our guns, like the Super Red Hawks, but only slightly. And it's overall a very nice trigger. Pulling this trigger, keeping the gun on target while you're doing that was very easy to accomplish. Uh, you know, even with the the, you know, the format of the grip and the ergonomics of the grip. Ruger calls it, uh, claims the weight on this is 37 ounces. It's a fairly heavy gun. You figure it's all stainless. The only thing on this thing that's not metal is the grip, and that's you know basically a wooden grip. But there's no polymer in this. It's all metal, so it's a heavy gun. That probably also really accounts for the recoil management of it. And from end to end, from the back here all the way to the front, is 9 inches long. So it's a long gun. And that's typical of the revolvers of this style, you know, your gunfighter type, where you know, the grip's way behind the gun, and then you've got the middle with the sonar, and then you've got the barrel all the way at the other end. But with the shorter barrel, it balances nice. When I hold on to it, it even when I'm just holding it with a couple fingers like this, it feels balanced. It doesn't feel like it's nose heavy and wants to tip on me. And when I'm holding it and I'm aiming it, it wants to stay level. So the it just it's overall it's a well proportioned gun in this particular setup. This is a 3.75 inch barrel. Now loading these is a little unique in that you flip open this loading gate and it exposes the cylinders, and you would take a round, you know, of course work better if you had a live round, but you drop a round into it and then you rotate it around and you, you work your way through it. Now if you've seen a John Wayne movie or a cowboy movie you'll see the whole thing where you load f uh, four then you skip one then you load one so that it comes around where the hammer is sitting on an empty cylinder. On the new Vaquero or what they're calling the Vaquero now that's no longer a concern. It has a transfer bar safety which I'll show you in a minute. So it is safe to carry this with the hammer down on a live round without having to worry about it going off. But this really isn't a concealed carry gun. Yeah, it would work. I mean, it's a gun and it fires a real round and it would work perfectly as a defensive weapon, but that's not what this is made for. But unlike the ones of the past where if they fell, like in the 1800s, if they hit the hammer or there's even, you know, stories where the gun was on a table and the table got hit and the gun bounced and went off, that's not a problem with these. So you don't have to worry about that. You, you can, if this is what you're going to take out and you're going to have one on each hip and you're going to go gunfight somebody, you can load six with confidence in this. Unloading is the opposite of that. There's a little bar here that you press down, right there, that pushes the round out of the cylinder. Now this is the limitation. With the shorter barrel, the ejector rod is shorter, which means it doesn't come all the way out. So if the round is all the way in and I give it a good smack, 
and everything's right, it may pop out on its own or if I have it at an angle. Otherwise, you often have to get and flip them the rest of the way out. If it had a longer barrel, it would have a longer ejector rod and then the rod would come out back, you know, basically here and would eject the round completely. You might find that annoying, but it really isn't. It, it's not really that big of a deal. It, you know, you're not going to be taking this out and trying to do, you know, hot reloads with it. And uh, so this push rod being, you know, this size is not really going to be a problem. But, you know, at the range we did find that we had to, you know, this comes right to, see it doesn't come all the way out, it comes right to about there. You know, we did find ourselves needing to, uh, you know, flick the rounds out a little bit. Get a little bit of light on it so you can see it. Minor, minor complaint, you know, first world problem. Now, disassembling this to clean it is actually fairly easy. You might think, well, how am I going to clean this thing all through this gate? And you really don't have to. There's a button here that you push, and then you pull this little pin forward, and you actually pull it all the way out. And now the cylinder is loose, and the cylinder comes out past the loading gate. And it does come out quite easily. It's just I don't have the angle right, you know, because I'm trying to show it on the camera. If I had it turned towards me properly and balanced right, it would pop right out of there. And now I've got the cylinder, and I can very easily clean the cylinder. And actually cleaning this is easier than a typical flip-out revolver, because on a flip-out revolver, this is usually still attached to the crane, so you got it flopping around on the side of the gun. I can set the gun down, clean this, set this down, very easily gain access to the barrel and the forcing cone to clean that clean the, you know, the internals, and then when I'm done with all that cleaning, I take the cylinder and drop it back in. Now while I've got the cylinder out, I'm going to show you the barrel with my uh, little fiber optic light here. It's a well machined, very smooth barrel, it's conventional rifling. Move it around a couple ways so you can see the different angles of it. But it's a very, very nicely done, well machined barrel and just a hint of a crown. It's not a true crown, but it's, it's well machined and smooth at the end. You can see right there, just a hint of a crown. So it's, it's a well done gun, uh, other than that little bit of a finishing consistency. And by the way, what you're seeing now is not defects in the finish. It's highly polished stainless. If I touch it anywhere, it's gonna leave fingerprints. This is the kind of gun you find yourself polishing continuously. But now to reassemble it, and take the cylinder and kind of drive it back, drop it back in, and then take this rod and push it forward. And you do need to make sure the cylinder's lined up, but I just pushed it all the way back down in, and it locked in place, and now the cylinder is free. And one thing that's nice about this one is the cylinder turns very freely when the loading gate is open in one direction and locks and won't go in the other direction. And, you know, at first you might think, well, that's going to be a nuisance. Actually, it's not. The nice thing about it is I turn it forward and it locks. When I go to load the round in, I'm not chasing the cylinder around. The cylinder's not trying to move or spin freely on me. So it makes it a lot easier to load and unload it, that it locks and stays. And then I, you know, I keep cycle through it. And if I want to show that it's unloaded, it makes it easy to cycle through. Once I've gone through and, you know, loaded it up and I'm ready to go, I close the loading gate. When the loading gate is open, the whole firing mechanism is disabled so that it can't accidentally be fired when you've got, let's say you've got five rounds in it, you're going to load the last one and you foolishly get involved with the trigger. You don't have to worry about it firing. The whole trigger and fire control mechanism is locked out when the loading gate's open. Once it's closed, it's ready to fire. And of course, being single action, nothing's going to happen of interest to you cock it and then pull the trigger and, you know, the fun stuff begins. A couple more things will talk about before I wrap it up. One, it is a cold hammer forged barrel, so that's one of the higher end features of it. And it has a transfer bar safety. So if I cock the hammer, you see this little plate right here that comes up. And there's a lot of confusion on what these do. You know, this thing isn't intending to block the hammer from hitting the firing pin. It's actually closing the gap between the hammer and the firing pin. The hammer actually can't reach the firing pin. When that transfer bar is in place, it now fills that gap and the camera comes down and hits the transfer bar, the hand's transfer bar hits the firing pin, effectively transferring the energy to the firing pin. So as I pull the trigger, and I'm going to hold the hammer back, as I pull the trigger it would come all the way up. And then the hammer would fall and it would stay up because it's attached to the trigger. The hammer would hit the transfer bar, hit the firing pin, 
hit the primer and fire the round. As I pull the hammer back, if I pull it back slowly, you notice there's a gap there because the trigger's not pulled. So if the hammer were to fall right now, it wouldn't be able to reach that firing pin. And as I pull it, it'll start to bring the transfer bar up because, of course, the trigger is kind of being partially pulled by the cocking action. And when I pull the trigger the rest of the way, that finishes it. So the transfer bar safety is the reason why you can carry this uh, with the hammer down on a loaded chamber because the hammer just plain can't reach the firing pin and unless the trigger is pulled the transfer bar is down out of the way and it's out of reach which of course the resting state would be the trigger forward transfer bar down. Other than that I'll show you, you know, a few of the curvatures you know it's nicely polished kind of right through here the curvature of it it's a, just a well done, really cool, nice, classic firearm. If you're looking for your next concealed carry piece, eh, yeah, keep looking. If you're looking to go out into the woods and gunfight a bear, you know, 45 long colt can be capable of that type of thing, but that's not what this is for. If you're looking for something fun at the range, if you are interested in cowboy action and want to get into cowboy action, uh, or you just want a really nice looking gun, this will give it to you. It's fun to shoot, it's easy to shoot, and for its intended purpose, it really does it quite well. If you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell if you do. Check us out on Facebook and Patreon, and have a great day. Thank you. They have the shorter barrels, a shorter rod. Yeah. Thank you.